Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another round of sound. This is the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. I'm Bob Pompiani. We have a lot to get into tonight as the Steelers missed an opportunity to move all alone into second place. Instead, they lay an egg, an offensive egg, in Cleveland today, losing 13 to 10. And we have a lot to get into. And here is your panel to discuss what happened today and looking ahead to next week. We have Jason Mackey from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. And then two representatives from 93.7 The Fan, and Mr. Andrew Filipponi, Mr. Colin Dunlap. So we have a lot to get into, and I'm going to start with the blame game. And, Pony, I'm going to start with you. Who gets most of the blame for what we saw today, which was a 13-10 loss against a team that did not have its starting quarterback, its starting tailback, three missed tackles in terms of no tackles on the team, basically, and yet they won the game. Who's to blame? Yeah, I think it's Kenny Pickett. I knew you were going to come to me on this because <laughs> you wanted me to say that. I wanted you to say, but I was. I didn't, it's true. Sure it, it, it's do it's it. true. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not saying Mike Tomlin had a banner day. He clearly did not. Um, coordinators too, but uh, he threw it what almost 30 times, and he didn't get over 100 yards until the final desperation play at the end of the game. I'm not sure he made one throw today in a 60 minute game that made me think this is why they drafted him in the first round and the thing about it too is the the ultimate irony of this entire game is that for three plus quarters they coached like they didn't trust him to make a play and then when there was two minutes left they put the ball in his hands three times they didn't complete a pass and that's what gave Cleveland a chance to win it. Which was unbelievable. They went from ultra conservative to ultra aggressive at a time when you never thought, and all the cards were in their favor at that point, Colin. So your question is, who, who's, who's to, blame? to blame? Art Rooney II second is to blame for all of this. He's to blame why there's no true succession plan after Ben Roethlisberger. He's to blame why Mike Tomlin feels he has unilateral power in that building. He's to blame why Matt Canada is the follow-up after Coach Randy, and they both stunk. Um, Art Rooney II has allowed Mike Tomlin to feel like one of the most powerful men in the NFL, and he hasn't done anything in 13 years in the playoffs. He's done very little, and it's an atmosphere that's created by Art because he's either afraid or he's okay. He's afraid to shake a tree a little bit, or he's okay with this stability that he thinks is being good enough to be right there in the mix. It's Art Rooney the second, and it all starts with him. And it's he has ceded power to Mike Tomlin, and it's just not good enough. I don't disagree with that, and, and I'd probably lean more toward Pony with this, but I'm going Mike Tomlin. I'm going Mike Tomlin, the coaching staff, for the simple fact that the game was there to be won. Kenny Pickett was not great. I agree with you. Art the second has created an environment where that stuff has happened. But... You run the ball, you establish it. Jalen Warren was clearly your hot hand at the end of the game. He's not on the field. Why? I have no idea. It is certainly within striking distance, Pomp, of, of winning this game. And I don't understand why they didn't lean more toward Jalen Warren and why this offense at this point, which is a coaching well, thing, in my opinion, to design more of an Here's identity. the thing, though, Jason. Said it was they, okay. didn't, but they didn't do any of that. Right. Okay? So your point is taken. But then Mike Tomlin has the audacity and he feels the unilateral power to walk into a media conference after the game and say, well, we thought our game plan I, was okay. He has no fear but that's still of his coach. job. No, it's that's, not. It's on the owner. It's on the, the coach for rubber stamping that for being okay. It's on the owner for not saying, get it done but or I mean, you might lose your job. And that yeah. has not happened in the past But we're eight talking years. about today. We're not talking about the big picture debate. The big picture. We're talking about today. Today was created by a big picture where Mike Tomlin has no fear for his job. But, None but, at well, all. It's about today. That's I fair. was looking at a blame for today. Well, this, same I understand thing. what you're saying, but uh, I mean, if you're going to look at one thing, I would think coaches, I would think quarterback, I would think play calling. All of those are options. Yeah, I hated the and play you, calling. And I, I mostly agree with Andrew. He brought up a, a lot of very good points with Kenny Pickett. I mean, there are throws that you look at this kid, and, and, and it's starting to worry I me, mean, frankly. You look at other first round picks and how they've evolved and how they look, where the progress from Pickett has been, and it just hasn't been there. Like, those throws need to be made. So, so why aren't they making those throws? Why aren't they even willing to go to the middle of the field at times when, why not? Good things happen if you make accurate throws in the middle of the field. You can get a lot of yards that way, yet they ignore it all the time. It's another stat chart of nothing but, you know, sideline to sideline, that's it, or dink and dunk underneath. Why? At some point, everyone knows it's coming. And if you saw Cleveland play defense today, you know that they knew what was coming. Well, the only defense that Pickett has in this, in this discussion is that that was a trend with the last two quarterbacks, is that Trubisky never threw to the middle of the field and that Ben 
wanted to but just get the ball out. But there were circumstances, no, I, I, right? I, I know. And so if I didn't have those point of references, I would just think that he's afraid to throw the ball over the middle. He doesn't want to throw the ball there because he thinks bad things can happen. You know, the game's moving too fast. We, we heard Chris Hoke tell you that last week. Um, I think it's a combination of he's being coached not to do it. And then on top of that, I think he doesn't trust himself. Well, I, just, don't one I don't think he was week. ever good enough, be honest no. with you. I said the night he was drafted, it, was, it would send this, uh, this organization into a deeper depth if they drafted a first-round quarterback. There was no quarterback in that draft worth drafting in the first round. If, and, and look, I'm not a big proponent of anybody, if, of Mason Rudolph. But if Mason Rudolph would have played from the time Kenny Pickett was drafted till now, Steelers would have the same record. They'd have the same Maybe record. Maybe better. Maybe better. Who knows? Yeah, I, the thing that kills me, you get your tight end back. You have a receiver who's six foot four, six foot yeah. five. Why can you not run a crossing pattern, anything over the middle, establish play action more? Like you're actually running the ball effectively, and instead of doing anything with that, they immediately pivot to something else, a, a, a cute pattern out to the sideline. Continue running the ball until they stop it. If you run the same play 17 the last times, who cares? They kept running it. And they pivoted off of it this time. Too much. I would have, Jalen Warren, you're hot, you're running the ball, great. Keep going. Nothing wrong with that. All right, next question would be then, if you had to make a move, and it sounded to me like Mike Tomlin's not going to make a move a quarterback, but if you had the control to do it, Colin, start with you. Who's your quarterback next week at Cincinnati where same situation applies? They have a backup and an opportunity to win a game in the AFC North. Um, it wouldn't be Kenny Pickett. I, this would be radical, but I would, get, I would get the two backups snaps with the ones early in the week and decide from there. Honestly, uh, it might be Mason Rudolph. It might be Mitch Trubisky. I think we saw what we know about Mitch Trubisky. But look, and again, I'm not a Mason Rudolph fan, but what has he done to be mired on this depth chart and not get another chance? If they re-signed him after he went looking at other places, is he just there as an emergency guy? You remember the last game he started, right? Have you watched Kenny Pickett play <laughs> in his career? I just I watched the Detroit game. And that was about as awful well, like, as it's you It's time to stop see. the excuses for Kenny Pickett. He stinks. He okay, stinks. but I mean, let's not pretend that if you turn things over to that guy, it's going to magically get any better. So it can't get worse. Who's your starter then, Jason? Uh, Kenny. Kenny. And I don't feel great about it, and I don't think there's a great solution. I don't think they're going to make a change. But if it's halftime of the Bengals game, I'm probably going to Trubisky if, if they can't move the ball and they have four first downs like yeah. they did today. I don't think they're going to make a change either. And, you know, I, I would if this continued into the next game and they're trailing and, and it's not getting done. Andrew, what would you do? Well, I just, what's the, what's the upside or what's the goal if you go to the other two guys? The goal is that you don't want to waste opportunities. And waste opportunities for what? Two backup quarterbacks no, but for four what, and five weeks that you can. But for, but for what with them? To try to win a division. To win a division. Yeah. With those guys. They have no upside. I'm we just, know what they are. They're backup quarterbacks in this league. Okay. Kenny Pickett's a backup quarterback in this league. Okay, but, but he's a first-round pick in his, in his second year as a starting quarterback. At the very least, you have more data on him to when you have it to make a decision at the end of the year as to what you're going to do with the quarterback position, he'll have made the decision obvious for you. I mean, to me, if you're just going to try to go to your backups. Yeah, you're right to now, win I mean, you're games. in the hunt in the division. Right. You have to try to win. The and you quarterback is not doing no that much these... to win. You want the guy who's going to lose it less. If you Kenny bench Pickett it, lost the game well, a then, lot well, then, today. So, so, I'm fine giving him another chance. Kenny Pickett is playing and has well, – well, Kenny well, Pickett is playing above people the same way Najee Harris is playing above Jalen Warren, by pedigree only. Okay, okay, but what have the guys behind Kenny Pickett done to deserve the playing time that Jalen Warren deserves? Warren is going out there and having seven yards to well, carry, 70 yard it's touchdowns. It's not apples to apples, though. Don't get I into mean, the Jay, running back. We're going to do that when we come back. At some point, Kenny Pickett break. has to play himself out of that spot, though. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll investigate that more and talk about the running back situation. Najee Harris finds himself in that predicament, and he wasn't too happy after the game. We'll get into that and more as we continue right here on the number one Cochran Sports Show now. Number one Cochrane Sports Showdown is brought to you by Number One Cochrane. Go one better. 